Hi, I'm Nicole Sears, a committee member of Authentic Voices, which is a fellowship that highlights um, diversity in publishing by bringing BIPOC women together in this educational immersive equity building program. Authentic Voices is sponsored by the Women's National Book Association and also the Women of Color Writers. And it is my privilege to introduce one of the inaugural year fellows, L. Iyengar. Welcome, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much, Nicole. It's a pleasure to meet you and speak with you over Zoom today. Well, let me tell folks a little about you. You are a scientist by training and you've lived and worked in the USA and India. In addition to the study of biology, El Yangar enjoys experiencing and exploring other cultures, ideas, and customs, and considers herself fortunate to have been in personal and professional environments which foster curiosity and learning. She believes a good narrative, fiction or nonfiction, that is told well communicates ideas across borders and cultures, and hopefully results in greater global understanding of diverse veins running through the global human family. And with that bio, I am so interested in hearing more about the story you've been crafting during Authentic Voices. Will you tell us about it? Sure. Um, so it is a short story. It's nonfiction. And it's based on an experience that I had uh, growing up in India where um, there was a war. Mm. So uh, the, the whole short story is a recollection of that, um, of that whole war scenario as a child. You know, how I experienced it when I was, you know, less than 10 years old and what I remember of it. Um, and I try and tie that in to a present crisis in terms of um, a fire in California and try to draw parallels between that crisis and this crisis and how one experiences it as a child versus an adult. So, um, that's basically in a nutshell what the story is about. Wow, that sounds like a really powerful glimpse into you as a person too. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, imagine that you had to get pretty vulnerable if you were digging into those parallels. Yes, yes, to a certain extent, yes. Um, but it, I also wanted to preserve the, the whole um, recollection as a child angle. So not to, you know, impose too much of the adult impressions and the adult, um, you know, as one grows up, one acquires a lot more baggage, just, you know, going through life. Sure. Um, and I didn't want that to impact so much the um, recollections that I had as a child. So I hope I brought out that aspect in terms of you know the the um, the innocence and the lack of experience that comes at that age. Uh, but then again, you look back and you know a postcard is what triggers that memory. So when I look back on the postcard and I look back on my memories and you know see what I what I saw in the postcard as a child. But what I can see now as an adult with a lot more experience and, you know, it's not just uh, the success that counts, but it's also all the planning and all the, the, the uh, fallout that happens from the war and the people suffering and, you know, that kind of aspect also. Yeah. You, it's a short story, so to that extent, um, it was very um, focused and probably very concentrated in that way. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it has a different kind of impact because of the, you know, the, the, the sharpness of the story. Well, and I'm just imagining the power of, of thinking, of reading about a war experience through the eyes of, of a child, as you as a child, and, and knowing that this is actually your story, this is a, a bit of a memoir lends itself to that. And these are stories that are so important that we don't shy away from hearing about. Mm, I right, think, right. Mm. you know, it, it's easy to, to want to make these fiction and think that they don't happen and they do. So thank you for being a voice that's sharing that kind of story. What do you hope that readers take away from it? Um, just a, a bit of the historical perspective that, you know, brought about those events because um, it's about a region of the world um, that is obviously very real to us who lived over there, uh, 
Um, it's about Bangladesh, and uh, which is a small country east of India. Um, so I think it for a reader who is possibly not aware too much about that geography and that cultural um, dynamic. Um, I'm hoping that it will bring that to the fore and maybe they'll be a little curious about trying to find out more about, you know, those, that part of the world. Uh, but also just in general, the strife that this kind of, um, you know, an episode brings, the, the people that are involved, the human capital, the human loss, um, which is very international. It has nothing to do with borders. So, yeah, I wanted to kind of bring both of those things to the fore. Well, it sounds from your description like you've done that. I, I have had, you know, just the privilege of interviewing all of the fellows in the program. And every time I hear about your story, I just am so excited about the anthology that's going to be published because you've written a powerful story. And I just, together with the other stories, this is going to be such an impactful piece of literature. And I'm really excited to, to read it. What's the title of your story? Um, the title of my story is Life Cycles. Mm. It can be taken in several ways. I mean, life cycles as a statement or the life cycle of an event, you know, mm. what it goes through the, the beginning, the middle and the end. And hopefully there's a positive resolution um, that allows us to keep living, you know, continue with this adventure of life. Wow. Well, well, I, I'm feeling even just a little bit hopeful listening to you describe that. This is, I'm going to be excited to read this. Very cool. You were also very excited to write this, so I have to say it's, it's, well, it's a huge, huge opportunity. But tell me about what the experience has been like to be in the Authentic Voices program. Sure. Um, for me, I mean, I am, I was a WNBA member even before I joined this program. And I came to know of it because of the WNBA newsletter. And it was mentioned there. So I really was not looking you know, to, to try and find a fellowship that I could incorporate into. Uh, I am a writer. I, I, I am a columnist for a, a San Francisco-based magazine called India Currents. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I do dabble a little. So in that, it's mostly, it's a magazine article, right? So I... I have contributed um, travel articles and opinion pieces and also health and wellness, which is what I'm doing right now. Uh, but to go, I mean, I have written short stories and even you know, longer works of fiction, but I've never done it in a formal setting. So I don't have any MFA degree or any kind of training in that way. And I was really looking for that. And this seemed like a very ideal program in that it didn't focus only on the creative aspects, which is obviously the bread and butter of this whole thing, but it also was, um, it, it very much, the program was designed to think about everything surrounding the whole enterprise of writing. So in addition to the creative aspects, also, you know, the um, looking for uh, somebody to do a developmental edit and then, uh, you know, the, the other kind of line language edit. And then moving on to publishing and looking for agents, which is we're still working on that aspect. So all that uh, is something that I was looking for, which is why I thought this would be a good program to at least apply for. And I was delighted that you know, I was able to work with it. So. Well, I am so glad that you saw that newsletter and decided to apply because you've been such a, a wonderful addition to the fellowship. And I do think that's the power of, of this particular program that, it, like you said, it's covering kind of all the aspects that are involved in, in getting mm -hmm. your work published because it can be such a steep learning curve, mm -hmm. you know, and especially in, for, for women who are underrepresented and who just don't know the industry ins and outs. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that that's been a great experience for you. Um, last question. What would you say has been your favorite or most impactful part of being a part of the fellowship? Well, um, I don't know if I can give you one event. Sure. <laughs> that's, 
Um, it's, you know, it's been everything. It's, it's been a delight to get to know my five co-fellows. Um, you know, we form a good group. I think it's very interesting. Each one has, comes from their own background, um, from their own, not only the cultural background, but also their lives. Everybody has a different approach to this program based on their experiences, which I think is great. Yeah. I think uh, you and Natalie and the rest of the team did a really great job of thinking, you know, choosing the people who could integrate and come together as a team. Um, other than that, I mean, we've been meeting great, um, you know, some of the, most of the people that I've met here, um, I hope I would be able to keep in touch with even after this fellowship and, um, if, you know, talk to them, use them as a sounding board, maybe help them. If I have the opportunity to do that, I'd be you know, very glad to do that. Um, so I think it's been, I, I, so if I were to give you one, um, you know, you asked for one thing that I would like, that I would like to take away from this. It's basically the whole ecosystem that's going to develop. Mm -hmm. That sounds like you guys have made some beautiful connections. Yeah, and even not only between us fellows, but even the um, you know the instructors, the mm -hmm. editors, the publishers. Um, Natalie has been great, and um, I'm you know I'm meeting you for the first time, but I'm sure hopefully you know the uh, associations will carry on beyond this fellowship. Absolutely, absolutely, and and I know you guys will be an integral piece of you know helping the next cohort that comes yeah. through the program too. Thank you so much for applying and saying yes and, and being a part of it. Is there anything that I didn't cover that you'd like to share? Um, not really. I mean, I'm just, uh, as I said, we're still in the process of the, um, I guess, the last one third of the fellowship. And I'm really looking forward to making more connections, you know, gaining more experience seeing the anthology come out, that, that would be a really great achievement um, for all of us. So, um, yeah, I mean, um, hopefully the program will keep going great guns and I'm sure it will influence a lot of uh, younger or maybe more experienced writers also to come into a framework where they are practically, you know, productive. I think that's really important. Easy to write and just keep it in your computer or keep it in your book, but to bring it out. I think that's what you Fantastic. Yeah, I, I am so looking forward to that. We're going to have to have a publication celebration. Yes. Um, absolutely on that. Well, thank you. Congratulations. I am looking so forward to, to what comes next and following along with you. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all for your hard work too. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.